guys, are you ready for this? I don't even know if I'm ready for this, but here we go. ha Ha <laughs> I woke up this morning, and my hair was all frizzled, and I thought, well, the only logical explanation for this is that my monster transformation is finally occurring. <laughs> the hunt is on. Okay, yeah, actually, upon closer inspection, I, uh, I don't think I like my hair all frizzled like that, so I guess I can never be a true monster. The dream is gone. But anyway, today's video is going to be about the hero hunter, Garo. Did you read the last chapter of One Punch Man? Did you see what happened in the last chapter of One Punch Man? Did you cream your jeans over it? If the answer to any of these questions is no, get out, because we don't want you here, alright? Um, people ask me, why don't you do chapter reviews of One Punch Man kind of the same way you do with, like, One Piece, or like you used to do with Bleach? And the simple answer is, One Punch Man is so full of, like, action scenes. Like, the last chapter was, like, 70 pages, and the bulk of them were all a, a, a fight scene between Garo and a Monster King Orochi. And it's like, the fight is like them jumping around, him shooting off energy blasts, Garo jumping, gooing, freaking acrobatic shit attacking him in the face, Orochi doing a weird, like, snake transformation where there's, like, 16 mouths coming out of his freaking face, and he's... How am I supposed to review that? How am I supposed to add commentary to that? You know, if it was a movie, I could give it at least a play-by-play -play or something, but it's a manga chapter, so just sit down and read it and enjoy yourself. I really can't you know, add a critique to this in that sort of fashion. So, um, instead, what it did do is get me really pumped to talk about Garo, and, uh, obviously this is a character that's very prevalent in the One Punch Man series. I've been, you know, considering, like, what's the right time to talk about him, and I think this is the right time to do it. Okay. So, um... The way Garo was originally set up in the story uh, seemed to be like sort of a standard antagonist, really. He was first mentioned by Bang, and he was actually seen very briefly in the anime just as sort of like a flashback, just kind of an image of him whenever Bang was discussing him to Saitama and Genos. He's like, oh yes, I had my student that he you know, defeated all of the members of my school, and then that's why only Chanrako is here. And I think Saitama or Genos were like, well, what's his name? And Bang's just like, Garo. And then we see this scene with him just like, you know, striking a, a fighting pose. Now, shortly after that, uh, they were all gathered for the S-Class meeting at City A, so we didn't really get to know more about Garo there. But in One Punch Man Season 2, which is confirmed and it's totally happening, it's it's coming up soon, sooner rather than later, we're going to be getting Season 2, Garo is going to be a central figure to this season. Uh, I don't know how long the second season is going to stretch for, how much you know chapters we're going to get out of it, but uh, it doesn't matter. Even if, even if it only covers a small portion of the chapters, Garo is still going to be very prevalent in season two so get ready for him but when he was first introduced he was actually in the hero association uh because uh sitch decided that because this great disaster was going to occur sometime within the next uh six months or the next year or whatever madam shababa was prophecy he decides we need more than just the heroes because the hero association has always been kind of uh you know uh, understaffed not a lot of heroes really to help out all over the world at all times with all these different locations and everything so he recruits villains to the group, uh, a bunch of like lowlifes and thugs and stuff. He decides like, hey, if you're going to help us out, you know, you save the world and maybe you get some special benefits and stuff. And Garo is there as well. Garo takes this time to proceed to beat up a bunch of different A-class heroes and announces that his hunt is on. He is known as Hero Hunter Garo. And, you know, like I said, kind of sets up as a standard antagonist. Oh, he's he's a bad guy that wants to beat up villains. Well, gee willikers, mister, that just sounds like such an interesting character. No, it doesn't really. It seems pretty standard. You know, you have a world filled with heroes. There's going to be people that want to beat up the heroes. Slowly but surely, we start to realize realize, though, that Garo is actually really good at this. He's not just a two-bit thug. He had the training of the Fist of Flowing Water Crushing Rock by Bang, and he proceeded to just one day go crazy and beat the shit out of everybody in the, in the dojo, and then he left, and now he starts using these talents against 
heroes and he's really good at it and so at first you know he proceeds to beat the crap out of magic man and blue fire and heavy tank loincloth at the hero association then he goes out and meets up with uh, spring mustachio and golden ball and we get to see how he fights and he's not just a typical like i'm just gonna beat you up no he's a master of martial arts so in his fight with golden ball he's doing that you know golden ricochet thing knocking his pachinko ball off the walls and garo is just dodging them all reflexively he gets one hit out on his leg but that's seems to be a trend like a lot of times when people fight against Garo they might get one or two hits off on him um, but then he learns and he adapts at a remarkable rate and then you know you're not gonna like deal the same exact damage to him you know more than once you know that that kind of thing right and even in fights where it looks like you know he's definitely going down like he he wipes the floor with a lot of the tank topper army and so that gets tank top master pretty pissed and they basically corner him one night at a park and tank top master just starts beating the ever-loving crap out of him and you think like oh well this is it you know he's an s-class hero garo's going down but garo even after he's bleeding and bruised and everything he's just like <laughs> and then tank top master senses like there's something oh i need to put an end to him like right now like he senses like this evil aura surrounding him like the things to come from this person are going to be really bad unless i put the smack down on him now and he fails at the end of the day garo resorts to using the martial art that bang taught him which he doesn't really like to use but he ends up using quite a lot throughout the course of the series uh you know and he basically adapts other fighting styles into it o over the course and he learns to increase his veracity with it and make and modifies it a bit for his own needs but the thing about garo that you have to understand is that he represents the frustrations of like all the monsters everywhere okay because when he was a kid he talks about this is his backstory okay when he was a kid he was a big fan of watching shows that focused on superheroes i think it was named like justice man or something really freaking cliche or something like that so he's there watching justice man which i am assuming is kind of like a playoff super sentai or common rider or something in japan and the thing that he always notices is that the villains always lose the monsters always get beaten by justice man you know that there's never a time where the monsters win or if the monsters do win they don't win for very long like i remember watching Power Rangers when I was a kid growing up that was my thing and um, the Power Rangers they always win right like yeah, every episode freaking Rita Repulsa like go oh, attack my monster shaped like a giant purse and then the Power Rangers show up and beat the shit out of it and they're like make my monster grow and then Megazord and then boom and then that's it you know, okay going on to the next episode every now and then the monsters will win but the Rangers always come back to defeat it there's never there can never be a moment where the monster just crushes the, the, the Power Rangers, destroys their Megazords, takes away their powers, and they're gone forever. The Power Rangers are killed, and the monster reigns supreme. That never can happen. You know what I mean? Because, well, 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 the show would be over, for one thing. They should attempt that. They just, just get some balls on it, you know? Um... But Garo is kind of a weird kid because he's watching this and he's not cheering for Justice Man. He's like, how come the monsters never get a chance to win? That's not fair. That monster, because he's like, the monsters are the ones that work the hardest. They're always coming up with new plans and new ideas on how to defeat Justice Man. And no matter how hard they try, they can never win. And Justice Man always pulls a victory right out of his Justice ass. It's almost like the writers of the show want the hero to win or something, you know, so Bagaro didn't really understand that as a young kid. He's just like, how come the monsters never win? And then when he's playing with his kid, with his friends at school, you know, he always wants to be the monster, and all that results in is all the other students, you know, ganging up on him. He's like, oh, Garo's the monster! Beat the crap out of him! And they just beat the shit. So he didn't have a lot of friends growing up. And, uh, y you know, and, and so there was one friend named Tachan that he had that he ended, uh, ended up beating up because, you know, he started like, oh, I'm the hero. He's like, well, I'm the monster. I'm going to beat you up. And he got in trouble for that. So that's the kind of way that his brain is wired. He wants to be the monster that beats the heroes. He wants to be the one that finally wins okay and you see that as a running theme kind of like a parallel to Saitama in a lot of ways because Saitama represents you know he's the one-punch man he always wins 
with one serious punch, he can end any fight, right? So it's like, he's like the representation of, like, the TV writings of Justice Man, or of, like, the Power Rangers, or, like, anything. Like, the Power Rangers are always going to win, because if they were to lose and die, the show would be over, and you can't have that. So, that's what he represents, and that kind of, like, and Garo's the exact opposite, where he's like, no, I'm gonna make the monsters win. So that makes that final battle when you finally get to Garo versus Saitama after so long, after so many uh, other fights they had to go through, that makes that fight so much more impactful and 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 it, I can't wait until it's animated it's probably not going to be animated this season because it's a long way away we're not even up to it in the Marota version yet um, so it's definitely not going to be in this season unless this season was like 40 episodes long or something like that who knows maybe it might be it probably isn't um, but some other fights that Garo goes through so he he slowly goes up through the ranks with A class into S class he fights Tank Top Master he fights Metal Bat which was in a very intense brawl right there one of the best ones ever um, you know in order for me to get because Garo's been in a lot of fights throughout the series he goes through a lot of fights gets a lot of battle damage throughout the entire course of it uh, always manages to come out of it alive but sometimes barely squeaking by and one of the favorite things that both one and Moroda love about Garo is I think just drawing the just absurd amounts of battle damage on him and slowly his evolution into a monster because he starts off looking like this he's a pretty intense looking dude really kind of spiky hair and shit black uh black long sleeve shirt he's got pants with like a you know a little little um uh, sash thing, you know, around it and stuff like that, but slowly his hair starts to become a little bit more wild looking like flames, and they become tinted red, and one of his eyes gets all bloodshot at one point and he gets scars all over his body and the blood, so it's it, it's slowly but surely becoming a monster um, and then, like, they love to just draw that, and one in particular states that he loves drawing Garo uh, very much like Bruce Lee, because Bruce Lee was this super muscular dude expert out of all these different kinds of martial Martial arts and Garo is just his back is just full of muscles just like Bruce Lee so really cool character to draw but going through a lot of his battles okay so he fought against Metal Bat and that battle Garo won but kind of barely because Metal Bat had that like final move where he gets back up with his bat and he goes to just try to attack Garo with it and Garo wasn't really prepared for this so it's like right about to hit him and then that's when Zenko Metal Bat's sister shows up is like stop fighting and Metal Bat like Ugh! stops the bat like right like two centimeters from Garo's face and the entire ground from like the air pressure from that swing because Metal Bat gets stronger the more um, fighting spirit he has so the, the air pressure from that swing just gets Pool! Like the entire, all the pavement around them just gets like cracked and broken. That's how much power was behind this. And I think one, or I, I, it was one or Moroda, one of the two mentions, like if that would have connected, that wouldn't have been good for Garo. It's implied that that would have killed him. So it doesn't though, but once again, he kind of squeaks away, uh, not, not really injured all that much. Uh, he does get a little injured from Metal Bat, but really it's more of just like his, his hands are like ringing from blocking the back so much um the next battle he gets in though does end up screwing him up pretty intensely he thought it would be a good idea to take on watchdog man okay caro no 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 come back after about 16 monster transformations and maybe maybe you could take on watchdog man but no he tries to take on watchdog man he thinks like oh he's just a furry i got that <laughs> That's a good freaking summation about what happens. Garo gets wrecked in that fight. Alright, so... He tries to fight against him using his martial arts, but Watchdog Man, he he's like a, he fights like a beast. He's a he's an animal, basically, or he's a man that's dressed like an animal, close enough. So he uses like the paw attacks to kind of redirect all of the martial arts. You know, Garo's doing all the different water crushing rock thing, and and Watchdog Man's just like paw paw paw, and then he gets wrecked. But the plus side about Watchdog Man is as long as you are not in his territory, he doesn't really care about you. So all Garo really had to do to avoid that was just to kind of wander out of City Q all hobbling, got my freaking arm broken, like, oh god, oh god, that hurt. So after that, 
he goes to retreat uh, and just kind of hangs out at this old shack out in the middle of the woods. Uh, there's a bunch of kids that play there. Garo seems to have a spot, a soft spot for kids, mostly because I think he sees a little bit of himself in them, especially Taro, the, the, the chubby kid that has the hero directory. You know, he sees him, and he's pretty nice to him. And, you know, he's like, don't call me an old man or quit following me. But he seems like a nice guy. And he's just like, yeah, you were made fun of, I was made fun of. You know, even subconsciously, he has sort of a connection to him. So Garo's chilling out there in this shack. And he mentions, a lot of times when Garo gets injured, he mentions like, oh man, I'm running a fever and I'm like, uh, my wounds are not healing and stuff. It's not as simple as just like, get back up and fight. But that kind of like, it, well, okay, it sort of is, but it just shows that even while heavily injured and with like broken bones and bruises and lesions all over his body and he's got freaking uh, like 105 degree fever, he could still fight against a bunch of heroes. That's what's kind of getting across here. So, while he's holed up in this, this shack, uh, a bunch of A-class and B-class heroes find him at this location. There's Death Gatling, who's armed with a freaking minigun. You got Glasses, who's a B-class. You got uh, Peach Cherry, who fights using arrows, poison-tipped arrows. Uh, you have Smile Man, who's an A-class. You, you have a lot of, uh, you have the, 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 the Wild West dude, who also uses guns. So, you know, Garo comes out and is basically up for the fight of his life, because, you know, if he was at full power, he would probably be able to take care of these guys no problem. But he's injured, and he's, like, delirious, and he's like, oh, Okay, let's do this. But he still manages to win, even after getting... Because it's like, okay, it's over for you, hero hunter. It's over for you, you monster. We're the heroes. We're ready to fight you. We're going to wipe you out. And, it, and for a second there, you think they're actually going to do it. But Garo, at the last second, he remembers his childhood. He remembers, like, the monsters never win. He's like, screw that. Kind of like that scene, you know, with, with, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, where he's getting all beat down, and he's just like bullshit picks up a tree and then starts chucking it at the heroes takes out all of the a class even managing to redirect the bullets from death gatling's minigun death gatling's literally just like screw this Get it, 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 it. and garo just you know like how many bullets are coming out of this thing per freaking second and garo just deflects all of them using his martial arts you know, he's evolved to the point where he could even stop gunfire with his bare freaking hands. And then he takes out all the other ones. And he, he was poisoned along the way. He got stabbed with poison arrows. He's freaking stumbling around. And then Geno shows up. Then Geno shows up and starts kicking his ass. Then Bang shows up and starts kicking his ass. And you're thinking like, okay, it's over. It has to be over. Um, and once again, he just gets really lucky. The Monster Association has already kind of taken a, an interest in Garo. So Phoenix Man shows up and kind of carries him away. Then Elder Centipede shows up and runs interference. So uh, they don't really get to capture Garo. Garo gets taken back to the Monster Association. He gets healed up a little bit, immediately breaks out, goes for a nice lunch. You know, just a light lunch. He's got to recover. Actually, this chapter was really kind of neat to see because after all of the crap you see Garo suffer, after all of the just consecutive battles he's been in and he's all bleeding and just like, oh, God, it was actually really um, fulfilling to see him you know, just devour an entire buffet at a restaurant, just gulp down a giant gluggo like a pitcher of water, just like, okay, Garo, you needed that, you, you needed that, because how much have you been beaten down in the last 24 hours, you know? So he heals up, and then immediately gets into a fight against, well, not only Saitama, there's a few moments throughout the series where he runs into Saitama, and he just gets knocked down, just kind of reaffirm that the hero is always better than him, you know? Um, the first time it happens is when Saitama's out shopping for a wig for the super fight, and Garo attacks him, and just, like, karate chops him in the neck, and Saitama's like, the hell are you? Are you trying to rob me? And then just flips him upside down and knocks him out. The next time is when they're, uh, Saitama's with King, and Garo sees him. He's hobbling back after being defeated by Watchdog Man. And then he sees him there, and he's like, oh, that's King. Well, he's the strongest hero in the S-Class, and I'm already beaten to shit by another S-Class, but I think I could take him. <laughs> you know? Um, Garo, he's a little bit, he's ambitious, but he doesn't really stop to think every now and then, you know? Um, and he's imagining all these different patterns that King's gonna take, and he goes to attack him, and then Saitama just punches him through a wall, and then he gets back up, and then later after he devours an entire restaurant, uh, he's confused for a dine and dasher, and Saitama defeats him again. So, yeah, that, there's a few little, like, they're not really 
fights. You know what I mean? They're just Saitama doesn't even know what's going on the entire time. That's the funny part. He doesn't even realize that that's Garo. Saitama went outside with the express condition of trying to find Garo, and he defeated Garo without even knowing it was freaking Garo. But anyway, yeah. Oh, by the way, in case you're curious, Garo stands for Hungry Wolf, and it makes sense because he disguised himself as a wolf when fighting against uh, when fighting at the Super Tournament last year. Um, and and Hungry Wolf, you know, he always wants more, got to defeat more heroes. He just even when he's like a wounded animal, he's still ferocious. That that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway. So, he, uh, gets confronted by Royal Ripper, who is a monster that is especially sadistic and has giant knife blades for arms, and then Bug God, who's just this really heavily armored Bug God dude. And, uh, they kidnap Taro, and he tries to fight back, Royal Ripper shreds him, he gets a scar right upside his face, and he's just left to the gr he just left on the ground, just bleeding out. And just the, the pints and the gallons of blood that he probably lost. The human body doesn't even have gallons of blood in it, but Garo lost gallons of blood. And he's just... This is the moment where he kind of slowly begins to, like, make his monster transformation because we find out in the recent chapter from, uh, from, well from Psychos. Let's just call her Psychos. We saw Psychos in the last chapter. I'm just calling her Psychos from now on. At least we saw her boobs anyway, which I'm not complaining. But anyway, yeah. We learned from from her that um what what really is the true monsterfication? Because there's there's cheap ways to get to it. Like you could just have a lot of negative emotions and you become a monster, or you can devour the monster cells, which the monster cells apparently up your base stats a little bit, but beyond that, there's no more evolution. But to become a true monster, like Monster King Orochi, where you could continuously evolve and get stronger and stronger and stronger, you have to deal with death over and over again that's catered to your specific level and ba basically just deal with hell over and over and over again until finally you reach this monster state. So Garo, he gets cut up, shredded, lacerations all over his body, and he's left on the ground just like... And then like seven, eight hours later, he just gets back up. He just regains consciousness and he's like, ugh. Damn, I have a headache. You know, I got this huge freaking badass scar down his face now. His eyes all bloodshot. He gets up and he's like, oh, okay. I'm gonna get that freaking kid back. Charges back into the Monster Association. Kicks the shit out of Royal Ripper. Punches his head clean off. And just does kind of like a twist with his with his uh, with his hand, and then the entire body gets like shredded, like it was cut by a blade. And then Royal Ripper is just turned into like cube dice bacon, basically. And then he proceeds to go and fight against Overgrown Rover and deals with all the different heat blasts from that. And then finally he deals with Monster King Orochi in the last chapter. And Monster King Orochi. Garo is quite not on his level yet. He It was an awesome fight, and he lasts way longer than Psychos, and I think a lot of people figured that he would last. But eventually, even after combining like all these different martial arts together, and he charges, Orochi is kind of the same thing, where he can also mimic martial arts. So he copies all of that, and Orochi has like like an infinite number of hands and snakes coming out of him that are just attacking him, giant heat blasts coming after him. Um, so Garo eventually ends up getting pounded to a wall, long story short. And that's where we're at right now uh in the Moroda version anyway because in the web comic we go beyond that I'll, by the way keep in mind i need a drink it's really hot in this room right now mm. yeah when the final battle is going on in z city after it gets leveled and you have all the s-class heroes there and all the dragon level threats there after all the dragon level threats are there and golden sperm appears and everything that's when garo makes his appearance but he's not regular garo he's monsterfied god garo godo yeah, so his monster transformation in this form is properly completed, uh, where his entire body is encased in sort of like this weird, um, you know, muscular shell. You know, it's got like veins all over. It looks really weird. Uh, his face is distorted. His hair is just changed into devil horns. And he actually goes through two more transformations after this. But in this form alone, he declares himself as threat level god, which is not something that's really all that debatable. I mean, he is stronger than pretty much every other S-Class hero. Um, he is able to take most of the... Like, this monster gave Saitama the most trouble in the series. Now, giving Saitama the most trouble, really, there's not... It just basically means that, like, I had to throw a few more of these than I usually have to, but they're still just these kind of punches, you know? So it's not, like, a big thing. Um... 
In fact, I want to say that in this fight between Saitama and Garo, Saitama took it less seriously than, Sa than when he fought Boros. Because when Saitama fought Boros, there was sort of this moment where Saitama sort of accepted him as a warrior and was like, I understand this guy traveled a long way and he's like this great fighter and he's kind of had to deal with a lot of the same stuff I had to deal with. So there's moments where Saitama kind of like, you know, it's like, all right, well you know, I'll, I'll, I'll fight you a little longer. And at the end of the fight, at the end of the fight between Boros and Saitama, he, he kind of lies to Boros and says, you know, yeah, that was a tough fight. That was a hard fought fight. And, and Boros is like, you're a freaking liar. And Saitama just walks away very somberly. He kind of took the, the, he kind of respected Boros. You know, you get that impression. You don't really get that impression with Garo. You get the just the trollingness that Saitama is known for. You know, even after Garo goes through like three different transformations into this huge hulking like monster form, Saitama still wins and Saitama at the end of the day is just like, "Quiet down. You're this is my town and you're causing a noise violation." Ugh! And that's that's basically how it is up till the very end there. Um but while he's just in his normal monster god form, uh, he's able to take out Golden Sperm. He's able to take out all these different S-Class heroes with, like, no problems whatsoever. Like, a My Mask gets up close to him and just unloads blows into him, and he just bounces him back. None of the other S-Class could even touch him. Flashy Flash can't even touch him. He moves ungodly fast. Uh, and when he starts fighting Saitama, when that battle finally gets into it, it's, it's stated that... He's faster than Saitama, and because Saitama's moves are so predictable, because Saitama's moves are just like a simple straight punch, a simple straight kick, a headbutt, you know, and because Garo is such a master of martial arts, he can read all these moves coming. So Saitama can throw a punch, and Garo is so flippin' fast, he could just hurry up and dodge the punch, grab his arm, and then... Under normal circumstances, he could just rip the arm off, but it's Saitama, so he can, like, do some judo moves, like, you know, throw the person's body around and then pinning him and stuff like that, but it doesn't actually hurt Saitama. Now, his fighting technique while he's in this god form is the Monster Calamity God Slayer Fist. And it's actually a combination of every other martial art that he's witnessed throughout his life and he's copied into his repertoire. All 12. So not just the Fist of Flowing Water Crushing Rock and not just the Iron Whirlwind Cutting Fist. There's also a bunch of other random ones that he learned throughout the years. Some of them he might have copied during the super fight. And uh, he incorporates all of that into his, his fighting style while he's a monster. And there's a lot of scenes where he like grabs Saitama and he's throwing him around and body slamming him. There's a moment where he like takes up his leg up to Saitama's head and, you know, attacks him that way. But no matter what he does to Saitama, no matter how many times he dodges his attacks and lands his own attacks, Saitama's not hurt. It's just like, mm, ow. And then like, I'm gonna rip off your arm, just, mm, ow. And then like, plus you to the ground and body slam you and punch you a shit ton of times. It just gets back up, it's just no problem. And Garo is sitting there wondering like, what the hell is this? What are you? And it's like, at one point, he calls Saitama like, you are literally the physical embodiment of unfairness. <laughs> you are the universe's, like, just unfairness given physical human form. That's what you are. And that's, that's a little bit of meta stuff. That's kind of like a meta that one is doing of like, yeah, that's what Saitama represents. He wins because I'm the author and the title of the series is One Punch Man, so that's why Saitama's going to beat you, Garo. And Garo kind of realizes this in the middle of the fight, like, he's just, he's beyond, I can't, it, it's literally so unfair, I can't beat him. And so he goes through, like, a few different monster transformations. He goes into this one hulking form, uh, still doesn't do anything to Saitama. And then, the biggest kind of troll moment, though, from one's part, is that he goes into this final transformation, which is this huge, winged, like, gargoyle thing, and we don't even get to see that battle. We don't even get to see this thing fight against Saitama in his final form. It, it ends with him on the ground, and he's all broken and shattered, and eventually, Saitama just breaks his spirit. This, this indomitable spirit that Garo had throughout the entire story where he's like I'm gonna be the monster that defeats all the heroes I'm gonna be the hero hunter I'm gonna win and, and, and uh, it, even all the times that he almost gets beaten down and killed in the series he rises back up with this spirit like I can beat them I know I can 
it gets shattered into a million pieces with Saitama because you can't beat Saitama. It's it's just, it can't happen. You're not going to do it. But the thing that truly damages him, the thing that truly he has to come to terms with, because the most devastating blow that Saitama deals with him is not a physical one. It's, it's, it's realization. It's truth. It's something that Garo has kind of been running from his entire life, and he has to kind of hear it from Saitama to kind of bring it to light. And Saitama tells him, I think you really want to be a hero. It's just being a monster is easier. And that real, that thing, that, whoa, that's like space, like, like 2001, a space odyssey. That is just like, boom, for Garo. That like, <gasps> and I think that's something that he really, he just questions his entire existence at that point and just breaks down. He's, he's in this monster form fighting the entire time dedicating his entire life to facing off against heroes and defeating heroes and he just kind of like <laughs> and then it just it just shatters apart and that's it that's that's when he realizes that it's over and, uh saitama just leaves he doesn't kill him he doesn't deliver the finishing blow all the other s-class heroes like and a my mask they're there and they're like oh no 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 you're killing him kill him now and kill him fast and in that situation, I kind of got to agree with him, I'm asking. I mean, look at all the shit that Garo did. Look at all the damage he did. Now, Garo did not actually kill any heroes because that was goes against... He still has, like, a sense of morality, and that was the thing that kind of tied him down from becoming a true monster. But he always had this sense of morality to never properly kill a hero directly. He's okay if a hero does get killed by a third party. He doesn't get upset by it. But he himself never actually kills the hero. And I don't know why that is. Maybe it might be because at the core of his being, he realizes that kind of what he's doing is just, he just wants the world to see that a villain can win. You know, he doesn't need to straight up maul all the all the heroes. He just needs to beat them. That's He doesn't need to take it that far, you know. Um, and also, at the end of the day, Garo's whole motive, it is sort of childish. Doesn't you Don't, don't you get that impression that it's just like, he's a little... <coughs> You know, don't you get that kind of impression where he's a little kid watching cartoons and he's like, I want the heroes, I mean, I want the heroes to lose. I want the villains to win for a change. And he just never grows out of that mentality and he just takes it on to when he's an adult and keeps on doing it. So it's sort of like a childish thing where he doesn't really want to kill people. He's not a straight up murderer. He just kind of wants to prove a point. But um, yeah, in that situation though, after everything he did and the threat that he poses in this form that nobody else except for Saitama was even a match for, uh, maybe you should have killed him or at least, you know, ripped you know broke off his his uh his arm or something you know at, at least do something but no Saitama doesn't do that he just kind of walks away at the end of it I really like Garo's journey I liked the story that was told around him he wasn't just a typical like I'm gonna kill heroes for the sake of just killing heroes he doesn't kill heroes he just hunts them and he's kind of running from his past the entire time and just trying to fight against a world that he views as unfair you know, all the accolades that heroes get and all how they're so famous and everything like that. He, he was just kind of fighting against that. In a sense, you feel like he was fighting against that just to fight against that because he just, you know, he wanted like an alternative, you know, to the world that they currently lived in or he felt like the world wasn't right for him so he was going to be the one to change it. I like the story with Garo. I can't wait until season two. I can't wait until this, like the fight against him and Saitama is, is in the Moroto version and when it's in the anime eventually, probably like season three or four when we're going to get to that, but whatever, I don't care. Uh, it's going to be happening and that's all that matters. So uh, what are your thoughts on... Garo, the hero hunter. What do you think about him? Uh, and uh, yeah, get some more One Punch Man content out. I've been kind of slacking lately. I have a lot of different projects working on at the same time, and this is Fully Cooly Week, so I got to do something related to that today. But um, thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, remember to work out. You gotta, you gotta get it going there. And if you wake up with your hair all frizzled, you might be becoming a monster, you know, or you just have bed head. One of the two. It's, it's like a 50-50 coin flip. Anyway, hope you guys have a good day. Teching 101, signing out.